Sunflower stars, a type of starfish, are being released into the wild around the San Juan Islands in Washington State. They're the first of their kind to have been bred in captivity by researchers at the University of Washington. A mysterious disease killed off billions of them over the past decade, upending underwater systems from Alaska to California. Joining us now is University of Washington research scientist Jason Hoden, who's leading this project. Jason, thanks for being here. How long have you been raising your sunflower stars? So it's been almost uh, exactly five years now when we started the project. And yeah, it's coming up on the fifth anniversary of the first fertilization event of now our oldest stars in the wild. What makes sunflower stars so special and, and, and unique? Um, well, there's a lot of things about them that make, you, make them unique. The, uh, your viewers might have recognized them. They're extremely colorful. They've got numerous arms, so they're uh, over 20 arms in some cases. Uh, and they move actually a lot faster than your typical star. They're top predators, so they're quite active. So you've released them into the wild. How are you gonna monitor their progress? Um, so there's no way that we have uh, of tagging them per se. So what we've been doing is taking photographs of them before we release them, and then we find stars in the wild using their sort of unique body patterns to see if we're looking at the exact same star. And how important are sun stars to the ecosystem, especially, I understand, when it comes to things like kelp forests? Yeah, so, um, I mean, they're top predators, and, and, you know, you've probably heard about other cases like wolves that when top predators are gone from ecosystems, it can have really uh, tremendous cascading effects on the ecosystems uh, overall. And we saw that dramatically in California. So, you know, you talked about this disappearance of sunflower stars. It was really bad in California and we lost almost all of them. And then almost immediately afterwards, the kelp forests started to disappear, which are like this incredible foundational important habitat, the most important marine habitat on, the, on our coast. And, uh, and with the disappearance of the kelp, what we saw was that was caused by this explosion of urchins uh, that occurred around the same time. And so sunflower stars eat urchins, and I think you can kind of piece together what the, mm. you know, the connections are here of why we think that uh, that ecosystem collapse uh, occurred, at least in part, and one of the reasons why sunflower stars are so important. And any idea what killed them off? Was it, was it climate change, warmer oceans? Like, where, do you, where do you look? Yeah, so I mean, um, so I, I think you mentioned that there was a disease, and and we really think that the the pretty much the only reason that they died off was because they were very susceptible to a specific outbreak of a known disease, but one that was a really bad outbreak 10 years ago now, and it just wiped out sunflower stars more than any of the other star species that were affected by it. Mm -hmm. And so we don't think sunflower stars are particularly vulnerable. They, our experiments suggest that they're really good in warm temperatures. They can survive in low salinity pulses, like when fresh water comes, um, comes in. So we think that they're pretty robust. They just happen to be very susceptible to this disease, mm -hmm. and it um, had devastating effects on them. And, and what will success look like to you with this experiment? Well, I mean, we're going to keep monitoring these stars. I mean, to us, it's been successful already. You know, we've been thinking about this for five years now, and we successfully reintroduced stars into the wild that we bred entirely in captivity for years until the point that they got released. So that's success in its own. But the more we follow this and the more that we're able to track these stars over time, looking at whether they can grow, um, how, how long they will stick around in the same spot, these are all really important questions for what we would ultimately like to do, we writ large, which is release lots of these stars potentially into the wild to help repopulate areas where they're gone. Jason Hoden from UW, we really appreciate your time and expertise. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it was a pleasure.